Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, this is the second video of underwriting chapter and in the previous video we have seen the concept of underwriting of shares and debentures and if you haven't watched that video then please watch that video first so that you don't get confused over here. So I will put that video link in the description below. Now in this video we are going to solve the simple problem of underwriting. Now let's see the question first. See here is the question, a company issued 60,000 shares of rupees 10 each. The whole of the issue was underwritten by X, Y, and Z in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. So here, what is happening? Here, a company is issuing 60,000 shares to the public and this whole issue is being underwritten by these three persons, X, Y, and Z. Who are these persons? These persons are underwriters. They are giving the guarantee, they are giving the assurance to the company that your shares in the market will be subscribed by the public. We will try to convince the public, we will promote your company and everything in return of a commission, of course. And if the public doesn't subscribe to your shares in the market, then don't worry, we are there. We have taken the responsibility in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. If the public doesn't subscribe, then we will purchase your shares. That is what is meant by underwriting, right? So here ratio is given, percentages can also be given or directly the amounts can also be given. But here ratios are given, it's not a big deal. We can easily calculate ratios on this 60,000. Okay, and then they have said the applications were received for 51,000 shares. So in total, the company received 51,000 applications, the applications for 51,000 shares. Okay, and then they have said the particulars of applications received were as follows. Marked application received for shares. Now what is marked applications? Marked applications means the applications which have come through the underwriter. So each underwriter puts a mark on the applications. He puts his own stamp like X stamp, Y stamp, Z stamp like that. Okay, so that the company can identify through which underwriter those applications have come. All right, so that is what is meant by marked applications. Marked applications are those applications which have special mark on them, stamp or any text on them in reference to Y, in reference to X, in reference to Z. And this is done only for the identification of the application so that the company can know how much applications have come through each of the underwriters. Okay, that is why marked applications are there. So here 30,000 marked application of X and 10,000 applications of Y and 5,000 applications through Z. All right, so here 30,000, 10,000 and 5,000. But there is one thing to keep in mind that in total 51,000 shares were applied but here the marked applications are 30,000, 10,000, 5,000. So this is in total 45,000, 30 plus 10 plus 5, 45,000 and the actual receipt were 51,000. So there's a difference over here. Now that difference is what? That difference is unmarked applications. We will see that while solving the problem. Then they have said determine the liability of underwriters. So we have to determine the liability of underwriters. How much each of the underwriter will have to purchase the shares they have to bring the money from their own pocket to subscribe for the remaining shares okay now let's solve this problem now before solving the problem let's analyze this question at first what happened at first this company issued this company issued how much shares it issued 60,000 shares right 60,000 shares and this whole issue was underwritten by these three persons x y and z right in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 so these three persons x y and z now the ratio was 3 is to 2 is to 1 so let's calculate c 3 is to 2 is to 1 right so 3 is to 2 is to 1 so 60,000 into 3 divided by 6 that is equal to 30,000 so x took the responsibility of 30,000 shapes and then y took the responsibility of let's see 60,000 into 2 divided by 6 that is equal to 20,000 so y took the responsibility of 20,000 so 30 plus 20 is 50 the remaining is 10,000 so z took the responsibility of 10,000 shares this was the agreement made between the underwriters and the company that x said 
I'm taking the responsibility of 30,000. Y said, I'm taking the responsibility of 20,000. And Z said, I'm taking the responsibility of 10,000. And if public doesn't subscribe to 10,000 shares, then whatever remaining shares are there in this 10,000, I will purchase those shares from my own pocket. That is what was being said by each of these underwriters. All right, simple, right? This was the agreement made between the underwriters and the company. Now let's see what actually happened. What actually happened was the applications were received for 51,000 shares. The actual what happened, the company, the company received, the company received how much shares? The company received only, only 51,000 shares. How much? 51,000 shares. And from this 51,000, they have said 30,000 were marked application of X. 10,000 were marked applications of Y and 5,000 were marked application of Z. So let's see X, Y and Z. They said X 30,000 and Y 10,000, right? So Y 10,000 and Z 5,000. So 5,000 Z. Now tell me how much is this 30 plus 10 plus 5 C? 30,000 plus 10,000 plus 5,000 that is equal to 45,000 so 45 minus 51 is equal to 6 so there is still 6,000 shares right now what are those shares these are marked applications these are marked applications so the remaining whatever is there that is unmarked application that is unmarked applications all right it is of 6,000. How did I find the 6,000? See, 30,000, 10,000 and 5,000 are marked application. Then whatever remaining is there, that is 6,000 are unmarked application out of this 51,000. And what are unmarked application? The application which doesn't have any stamp, any mark are called unmarked applications. And these applications are got through the company. Okay, here these applications have come through the underwriter but these applications have come through the efforts of the company all right this is what is meant by unmarked applications now this is what actually happened the agreement was of 30,000 20,000 and 10,000 and the actual received was 30,000 10,000 5,000 and 6,000 unmarked applications now let's solve the problem and see how to calculate the net liability of each of the underwriter how much each underwriter have to subscribe the shares and how much they have to bring the money from their own pocket to subscribe to those remaining shares now first we have to calculate the unmarked applications we have to prepare this working note this small working note for the calculation of unmarked applications see how to calculate unmarked applications now i have already shown you how to calculate but still we have to prepare this working note okay see First, we have to take total applications received. Total applications received. How much applications did we receive? The company received 51,000 shares application, right? So 51,000. And then you have to subtract marked applications. You have to subtract marked applications. All right. How much are marked applications? C, X, Y, and Z, 30, 10, 5, right? So X y z from x it is 30000 from y it is how much 10000 and then from z it is 5000 so in total this is equal to 30 plus 10 plus 5 it is equal to 45000 and then you subtract these two 51 minus 45 see 51 minus 45 it is equal to 6000 so 6000 are the unmarked applications see this is how you calculate the unmarked applications you have to subtract total application received by marked applications then you can easily get unmarked applications simple right it's very simple very easy this is the working note for the calculation of unmarked applications now let's solve the problem now after the calculation of unmarked applications now we have to prepare this table for the calculation of underwriters liability that is how much shares are to be subscribed by each of these underwriters with their own money that is what we have to find we have to find the net liability of underwriters it's very simple to calculate that okay so now let's start 
First, let's see the format. See, the format is very simple. First, we have the particulars column and then we have the underwriters column. Now, in this problem, there are three underwriters. So I have taken three columns of underwriters X, Y and Z. Simple. Format is clear, right? OK. Then we have to take the gross liability first. We have to take gross liability of each of the underwriters. Now, what is the gross liability? C. At first, what happened? At first, the company issued 60,000 shares. And this whole issue was underwritten by X, Y and Z in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1. Right. And then we calculated the number of shares, 30,000, 20,000 and 10,000. So X took the responsibility of 30,000 shares. X told to the company that he will try to bring 30,000 applications. And if the public doesn't subscribe, then he will have to purchase the shares. That is what was agreed between the company and the underwriters that if the public doesn't subscribe, then they will take up the shares. They will purchase the shares. So this is their liability now. So the gross liability is 30,000, 20,000 and 10,000. So we have to take that and then we have to write the ratio on this side. OK, and then we have to subtract the marked applications. We have to subtract the marked applications from the gross liability. Now, where are the marked applications? See. The company received applications for 51,000 shares. Applications for 51,000 shares out of which 30,000 and 10,000 and 5,000 were marked applications. Marked of X, marked of Y, marked of Z. So we have to subtract these marked applications. Okay, Marked application 30,000 of X, 10,000 of Y and 5,000 of Z. So we have to subtract that. So 30,000 minus 30,000 is equal to nil and 20,000 minus 10,000 is equal to 10,000. 10,000 minus 5,000 is equal to 5,000. And after subtracting the marked application, then we have to subtract the unmarked applications. Now, how much were the unmarked applications? We calculated that, right? We calculated that. See, total applications received minus marked applications. We got 6,000 as unmarked applications. So now we have to give the credit of unmarked applications to the underwriters. OK, so we will deduct the unmarked applications. See how to distribute the unmarked applications. See, unmarked applications were 6,000, right? So 6,000 into we have to take the gross liability ratio to distribute the unmarked applications. So 6,000 into 3 divided by 6, that is equal to 3,000. So 3,000 goes to X and then 6,000 into 2 divided by 6, that is 2,000. So 2,000 goes to Y and then 6,000 into 1 divided by 6, that is equal to 1,000 goes to Z. Simple, right? Unmarked application, you have to distribute that in gross liability ratio. 3 is to 2 is to 1. Simple. So you have to subtract the unmarked applications. And see here, 0 minus 3000 is equal to minus 3000. Now here there is surplus. Okay, we'll come to that. And then here 10,000 minus 2000, it is equal to 8000. 5000 minus 1000 is equal to 4000. It's very simple, right? There's nothing here. We just subtracted this. We subtracted the marked applications and then we got the balance and then we subtracted the unmarked applications. Now unmarked applications were 6000. So we distributed that in the gross liability ratio and we subtracted that from the balance. Then we got here surplus of 3000 in X column. Now whenever you get surplus, what you have to do is you have to transfer the surplus. Surplus of X transferred to Y and Z. This surplus has to be transferred to other underwriters column. OK. Now here you have to remove this surplus. How will you remove? Simple, right? To remove the minus, we have to add, right? So that it can be cancelled out. To remove minus 3000, to make it nil, we have to add 3000 so that it get cancelled out. So it will become nil. Okay. And then this has to be transferred to Y and Z. How to do that? See, the ratio was 3 is to 2 is to 1. Now the X is gone, so it will be 2 is to 1. So 2 is to 1. In 2 is to 1 ratio, we will transfer it to Y and Z. So the amount is 3000, right? So we will transfer that 3000 in this ratio, 2 is to 1. So into 2 divided by 3, right? 2 plus 1 is 3. So divided by 3, it is equal to 2000. The 2000 will go to Y and then 3000 into 1 divided by 3, 1000 will go to Z. Simple, right? So this is how you have to transfer the surplus. If there is surplus over here, you have to transfer it to these two guys. And if surplus is here, then you have to transfer it to these two guys like that. OK, so this is how you have to transfer the surplus and then you have to subtract this. 
So 8,000 minus 2,000 is equal to 6,000 and 4,000 minus 1,000 is equal to 3,000. So at last we have got the net liability, net liability of each of the underwriters. Now Y has to purchase 6,000 shares and Z has to purchase 3,000 shares. Simple, right? It's very simple. But X doesn't have to purchase any number of shares because his fulfillment is completed. Okay, so he doesn't have to subscribe to any number of shares. But Y and Z have to subscribe to 6,000 and 3,000 shares. They have to bring the money from their own pocket and subscribe to the shares of the company. Here 6,000 and here 3,000. Simple, right? This is very simple to calculate the underwriter's liability. First, you have to take the gross liability, subtract marked applications, and then subtract unmarked applications. And if there is any surplus, then transfer the surplus to other underwriters and then subtract them, then you will get the net liability. And sometimes there will not be any surplus, okay? So this is how you calculate the underwriter's liability. Simple, right? I know it's very easy. Okay.